and the Jakarta microprofile call, and I wonder how that went. You should give us an update. Um, <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on. Anyway, hold on. Sorry. Uh, so starting the meeting here, we are officially recording. Um, welcome, everybody, to the June 25th iteration of the MicroProfile Live Hangout. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. The meeting minutes uh, are, thanks, Martin, uh, are in the chat. It is everyone's shared responsibility to take notes during the meeting, and please really do help take notes. Um, and if you are on the call, uh, please go to the meeting minutes and add your name. Uh, if you're not representing or not interested in having your company name there, just put down an individual or something like that. Okay. Uh, so um, let's begin with, uh, do we have Kevin on? Yeah. Okay. All right. I need to give you host. No, there you are. Okay. I think I need to give Kevin uh Host right, co-host rights, so he can uh, help mute folks along with myself if needed um, with background noise. So, oh, actually, that's another point. Please put yourself on mute if you are not speaking. Okay. Um, thought uh, we would get back to having our, our kind of roadmap discussion as the first item, just to get a status of where things are. So. For the standalone specs, uh, I basically copied and pasted what we had there from last week. Um, I suspect the only one that might have made, uh, I'll just make, yeah, that's gonna come out wrong, but you know, made uh, progress towards um, like being released, like imminent release, is the reactive messaging spec. Um, when I looked yesterday, I didn't see it was actually released. I was just wondering if we have kind of a status on that. We we released our RC1. Uh, oh, it's RC1. Yeah. So we are going to right. release the RC2 uh, is, uh, this week, and then release the final release uh, towards the end of this week. And okay. uh, we are shooting for 3rd of July for the Eclipse review. Okay, end of week. Um, so I, if anyone else has any kind of updates for the other standalone specs, uh, feel free to add something if there's something important to say in terms of updates. Yeah, for, for context propagation, we're on mostly the same schedule. We already have an RC3 out there, and we're looking also to, to get something um, to be review by July 3rd or so. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. What's uh, July 3rd? Uh, Whatever is next in the uh, review process there. <laughs> I'm not even, it's the first time going through it. I'm not okay. exactly sure. Yeah, it's a called Eclipse Review. Uh, the first, uh, Wednesday, first week on Wednesday. Right. But now if, if you have not requested a review, um, it's supposed to be two weeks in advance, then you probably won't make that. Okay. But yeah, in that case, I have to shoot for the, the next one, third week of July. Well, what, you know, what I would do is, like, if you guys are really close to being ready, I would go ahead and submit for the review on July yeah. 3rd. And if they can <clears throat> still contain it, they will. And if not, it'll get pushed out. But at least you'd, you'd have it on the agenda and you, and you might get lucky. Okay, good idea. I will do that uh, after the call. So Nathan, I will keep you in the loop. Yeah, that'd be great, thanks. All right, uh, awesome. Any other updates? Okay, uh, I saw the RC1 comment uh, for LRA. That's good. Um, oh. So, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, John, so I just have a, uh, just a general comment. It's come up a couple of times. Emily brought it up to me, and then I was talking with um, uh, Don Bourne related to some metric stuff. And we do have to, all, everybody has to pay attention to the dependencies that we are using. And being able to file the uh, contribution questionnaires uh, appropriately so that we can get those in place. And for most of them, if they're 
test and build um, CQs or ones that have already been approved by another group, um, they're, they're very easy to get through the process. Um, and we just have to stay on top of that because we're finding some that we are missing or forgetting to do. So I'm throwing that out as a general comment. And also, by the way, I did find that um, um, I, I, I'm not as good with uh, grepping as I thought I was. So my, my little um, helpful um, commands on the wiki page for determining your, pat, your dependencies, they were not as accurate as what I had hoped. So I, am, uh, I just figured out the proper update this today and I'll be updating that wiki here as soon as we're done with the meeting. All right, thanks, Kevin. Someone, Andy, you are asking questions uh, in the chat, but you could use a hand and ask directly because we missed those questions. As long as they share, start, share the video, even not. <laughs> or ask us for help. We can totally repeat the question that is for Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Andy Guibert is normally not shy, so I don't know what the deal is, but um, he's <laughs> asking whether or not we have to have clearance on test scope dependencies, and uh, yes, we do. We do, we, we do have to file those for, they're called test and build dependencies, and as long as we identify it as being a test or, or build dependency, then they go through relatively quick. Yeah, I just want to mention, but I forgot the content, the session from last year's EclipseCon Europe Community Day, where, um, what's his name again? From Eclipse was doing a session um, on, on these subjects where these questions were also answered and, and he explains that Wayne uh, in, in detail. Oh, yes, yes, Wayne Beaton, yep. So I'll try to find the, the URL and paste it in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, please paste it in the uh, meeting minutes. Okay, um, microprofile, I'm going to try and forge ahead here. Uh, microprofile 3.1, uh, are any existing specs planning updates? That uh, will be shooting for October, right? October? That's, that's correct. Yeah, so uh, um, we, MicroProfile config might have some updates, but to be determined, so we need to work out the issue first. So we do plan to do something in the config. Okay, uh, anybody else? So we are working on metrics 2.1, um, and we, as we do not have any um, incompatible changes, obviously, with gradual uh, updates and uh, cl clarifications, I guess we could also be part of that. Okay. And Martin speaking, as, as I wrote in the minutes, we have a lot of stuff actually going in house, so probably we will scrum something for October. Okay. And then I think between now and then, um, we'll have to discuss, uh, well, we've been waiting with uh, the operator spec um, for the messaging spec and maybe add them both at the same time or, or what to do, right? We're still having that growing pains discussion, which I might actually kick up again here shortly. Um, but I'm guessing we won't have any new spec editions in October. That's my assumption. You mean to the platform? Thank you, to the platform spec. Right. Yeah, and then we also need to think about context propagation as well. I think it's needed for uh, uh, messaging and needed for, for tolerance. So I think we should discuss these three, uh, I mean, released standalone releases to see which bucket they should go to. Yeah, so for the October date, none of them would be eligible to be added to the core platform spec. 
by the way we currently define the process. It would only be the spec uh, release after that, so it would be the February release um, as the next potential time frame, unless we change the process between now and then, which is part of the growing pains discussion. Okay, I didn't want to sidetrack it to that though. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've got a config, metrics, and health, um, potentially. Uh, somebody added a general reminder, but there's no name there. So according that, to the rules, <laughs> I should that, move on. That's me, that's me uh, just noting it down about the CQs. Ah, uh, OK. I'm not sure how we track that as a, because writing minutes is, um, well, you know. Gotcha. There we go. Yeah, th thanks for doing that. I, yes. you know, I had brought it up as part of our uh, release discussion, but yes, we do need to document that. So, thanks, Heiko. All right. Uh, this is a discussion that we uh, added a month ago, but we didn't have time to get to. I think last week, uh, or sorry, uh, last meeting, and that's around the guidance around implementation first. So um, can I kind of put the item in there as uh, a, a, a placeholder? I know this is a, an area where you're kind of leading this discussion. Um, I've got some thoughts as well and, and others may have. So do you want to kind of go ahead and take that over? I uh, can do. Um... So basically, this is a question of around how we're developing specifications in the sense that at least my recollection way back when uh, was that we wanted an implementation first approach to move away from how things have been done at the JCP in terms of creating APIs out of nothing. So um, that kind of led me to wanting to clarify things because I realized that the Sandbox proposal stuff we described doesn't explicitly say it needs to be coming from some kind of implementation. Um, so that's how it all started. And then there's been lots of debate on the uh, Google thread around it. So, so Ken, go, go ahead. Your, so, Ken, what's your understanding of implementation first? Because I, how I interpreted that is that we just need to have an implement a working implementation before we cut an official 1.0 of the spec. But do you mean to say we need to have an actual full working implementation before we even begin to look at any sort of spec? Well, it's a, it's certainly the former. Um, I've always interpreted it as the latter as well. Otherwise, we're basically doing the same as the JCP in terms of creating APIs without any basis from an existing implementation. Now, whether that existing implementation then becomes the implementation and implementation for the microprofile spec, if it becomes one or not, I, I don't think is here or there, but it's more a case of uh, having the things we define as specs coming from uh, somewhat proven implementations out in the wild rather than just making stuff up in, out of thin air. Yeah, so I guess, so then your your interpretation of it kind of conflicts with, I think, one of the other goals of MicroProfile, which is to be innovative, right? I mean, if we're only standardizing and, and specifying existing proven technologies, then, you know, how how can we claim that we're, you know, solving innovative problems, I guess? I don't if, think... Because I think we should look at the problem and then maybe see how we can have an impulse or a spec that solves that problem. But if we can do that from day one in the micro profile umbrella, you know, sandbox or whatever, um, that seems like the right path, in, in my opinion. I can don't I think this... what problem we're trying to solve because I haven't noticed lots of clutter in people proposing things to be adopted. That'd be my, my question as well. Um, has there been a situation where we're not doing this and it's an issue? Uh, the, there hasn't been an issue so far, um, but it was a case of um, when Gordon brought up the event sourcing thing, I realized that the details in the sandbox aren't specific, specific uh, around that in terms of needing implementation first. So that's where it kind of came from. I, I would just like to state clearly that in terms of what's written up in our 
community constitution, it's not that it's slightly vague or it, it doesn't cover it. It explicitly says there is a zero bar of entry for somebody using the sandbox. And when we talk about it, we tend to muddy the waters between someone using the sandbox and them actually trying to propose something as becoming a microprofile spec. And I always like it in these sort of discussions when things like that are crisped up. Because if you say to me that, you know, it's, it just needs clarification and what it's really saying is this, but what I read is it says there is an intentional zero bar of entry to the sandbox. I don't know whether I'm misunderstanding what's being said or the person is kind of not reading the same stuff as me. I think, I think uh, is a uh, micro profile has been was... around for, I mean, a few years. And then it has been successful. I think it's a sandbox idea is uh, is good. Uh, we shouldn't uh, be afraid of using like uh, adopt what has uh, been used in JCT. I think that some part of the JCT is successful. So that's why we have Java uh, EE or these umbrella releases. I was wondering. I was wondering what Ken might think about what I was saying in terms of are you talking about clarification about who's allowed to use the sandbox? Or no, are you talking uh, about what there, stage something has to reach in order to submit a proposal? No, to get in there in the first place. Um, the zero bar from my perspective was there wasn't any um, process hurdles that you've got to be a committer on the Eclipse project to submit to it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's my uh, understanding of the zero bar and I know in discussions with Mark and, uh, and Mark has said many times that the idea early on was to go away from the JCP way and have an implementation first kind of approach and I, I think for me that means that we need to have some kind of implementation or at least basing the ideas on otherwise we're in a situation where what gets created in the sandbox is an implementation and then as micro profile doesn't have implementations with you've then got this chicken and egg of well we've created this api and implementation now we need to find some way to have that implementation that we can then implement the spec from so that's one of the issues that i've been thinking through with this as well can you say that one more time because i kind of got lost as you said implementation so many times yeah me too i got totally lost <laughs> oh, my, my, my ploy worked um <laughs> but basically <laughs> So if we don't, if what goes into the sandbox isn't based on any exist, existing implementations in any way, that to prove that what we've developed in the sandbox makes sense, we can't just have an API. We need an implementation to verify that what's there actually makes sense from a user perspective and we're not creating an API that no one wants to use. Is, isn't this um, rather something that is... Uh, iterative on one side and then should be applied at a later stage. So basically when it's to, to leave the sandbox and become a between quotes real project, then you should have something uh, backing it. Because when I recall from how we started metrics, uh, we sort of had uh, writing some um, spec part, implementing it, writing some tests, right, iterating over that, um, in the whole thing, I mean, it wasn't an empty spec where we at the end said, okay, now it's 1.0, now go and implement. But at that time, we also had, of course, the API plus tests. I mean, you, you need to have a, a test at the end uh, and therefore you an implementation makes sense to, to be able to uh, test against. But um, I have the impression that, yes, we should have an implementation, but not to enter the sandbox, but rather to, to leave the sandbox. Right. But I just wanted to add something. Um, the bar for leaving the sandbox can be very intentionally high. If the bar for entering the sandbox is also a little bit higher, are we speeding up innovation or are we slowing it down? Well, people are maybe thinking the answer to that question, and maybe I'll, I'll jump in and sort of maybe maybe make my point. Um, the I think there's generally value in 
being able to put an idea into words as what you know a proposal as an API without that implementation, not spending time trying to implement it first to only find out then that it's got no legs because nobody else is interested. Um, so being able to say this is what as a concept I've got, do other people agree? Is this something widely accepted? You know, is this actually solving a general problem, etc. Getting that feedback, iterating on that definition. And then say, okay, now we've got something that's settling down into something more concrete. Now let's, and if it's lacking in implementation, let's go build something because there's no value in doing so. And that become like your reference implementation, have a TCK, that type of thing. And that might be for that particular specification, the path for it being accepted. Because I think there is value in, as you say, I think, and I, I think I've heard the same on other podcasts even, is that having you know inventing an api with no implementation is maybe solving a problem that nobody has so i can i can certainly see where the the question is coming from but i as i say i think there's value in being able to propose ideas iterate them put them somewhere central get people's input at all cut through the ones that just don't have any legs and not waste any time on them I think I think the other thing is that different spec people trying to initiate different sorts of specs and different sorts of people might have different problems. So something I'd like to see more of is more user involvement in shaping specs rather than it being um, as vendor driven as it is. And I think if you're the sort of senior architect of in Red Hat or IBM, you know you can assemble a team to build something. So you might not have any problem with needing a sort of standards for people to rally around. But one of the reasons why I think users aren't being so proactive in suggesting things into MicroProfile, apart from transitively through, through vendors perhaps, is because it's hard to converge uh, users and create a team and create a sense of community. And one thing the sandbox might do would be to help people who can't sort of command a large squad, such as, such as you can, Ken, um, to, to kind of form around an idea and see if they can make something that the microproof for all community thinks is worth doing. I think uh, to go back to David's, David's question, I think uh, obviously if we enter, enter it, read the bar for entering, read the bar for exist, exiting, definitely we'll slow down the micro profile iteration so and, uh, I wonder I wonder sorry I know you come in after me again but um, I wonder what people think about it being used as a sort of standard for people to gather around well I mean the uh, I was one of the people who proposed the sandbox um, and what I had in mind was as you say it's if we don't have a sandbox then people have to get their support somewhere else outside the micro profile community and someone would basically put a repo up in their private git in their github in their re repo in github and say here everybody go look over here I, I got a cool idea what do you think about it and they would be sitting on, on the edge of the micro profile community for potentially a very long time and then we sort of scatter right and uh so Having some place where people can, uh, you know, come up with a crazy idea, no legs at all, and get it to the point where it might someday be worthy of a micro profile project. Uh, I think there's value in us having a place in micro profile where we can catch crazy ideas at any stage so that they can be developed and that fuels our future awesome specifications. They are, they're not awesome specifications when they go in. They're crazy ideas. And so we, we're not, we don't have a place to capture crazy ideas, then they'll happen somewhere else. Yep. Um, you know, and, well, well, so the, the, the one thing just to add to that, um, the, the one part of our process that we have been doing, I don't even know if it's documented, but we do kind of, um, propose ideas through either the hangout or through the Google group or you know try to get some discussion going before it even gets to the sandbox so we're already doing a little bit of vetting up front um, and and I and I think that's worthwhile 
because there may be some idea that is just like, you know, totally in left field. And it's like, no, why don't you go talk to the spring folks, you know, or I'm just as an example, but you know, <laughs> just, you know, I, so I, 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 I really agree that uh, I don't think we want to raise the bar for the sandbox. It, it seems like the big kids are sitting in the playground and saying, you know, get off, get off our grass. You know, it's, it's our baseball diamond, you know, because I don't see a lot of people crowding into it. And we, I think we want to encourage more people into it rather than say, you know, get off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would guess I would say that it's really, really, really essential that we have a place to capture crazy ideas at any stage and people feel welcome to use it. So that, that, that also means that a lot of those ideas might never graduate from the sandbox. It's okay. Um, you know, it would be fine if there's a bunch of things in there that kind of lose steam uh, because it's better that we at least make the attempt uh, versus being too worried about things going in the sandbox that are never going to leave, right? It's okay. Put your crazy idea in there. Maybe it goes somewhere. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe maybe after a month and a half, you yourself think it's not a good idea. <laughs> you know, but you've tried it out. You 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 played with it, and you scratch the itch and realize, okay, yeah. not such a big deal. I well, I don't think I'm going to spend much more time on it. And so right. Emily came up with a good process to tidy it up. You know, if something hasn't had any activity after you know six months or something, or if it gets too cluttered, we can tidy it up. Sure, let me just get history, right? So mm. it didn't kill anything in any moment. So I have a question. Did we ever create like a, a vision, a statement for the sandbox, just directly there that it tells you just as the forum and how to use the microfile forum? We uh, can add a paragraph that says... I thought we did. Yeah, there is. There's a feature yeah. in it, document. Yeah. So just to maybe add my sort of experience again, so far as being a bit of a newcomer to all of this process, um, I mean, I asked a question on the Google group about logging, um, and <laughs> I'm amazed how much sort of this is called, but, um, and there's discussion there, and, and there's, you know, there's plenty of long paragraphs <laughs> going back and forth in that, in that thread. And it kind of got to the point where I think there was enough um, ideas and thoughts and, I, and that that really needed to be turned into trying to write that as a specification to actually clarify what I'm, I'm proposing amongst other ideas that have come through that thread. Um, so and I think Emily suggested that I take the sandbox and, and try and, and start a specification there. Um, so I think the, the, the Google group part sort of gave me enough confidence that this at least worth an, it's worth a try and trying to write a specification um, rather than it being completely a, a stupid idea completely. So I've now gone to the next step. I've forked the sandbox. It's in my GitHub now. I've started writing a specification for the, 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 the concept I've done. Um, and once I've got that to a point where I think I can share it, I probably would post that first back to the Google group and say, hey, here's my fork of the sandbox over here with some ideas, have a look, provide comments, and then continue the process from there depending on what the comments come back like. Um, the other part B of that really is that part of that specification is, is not really an implementation, it's maybe just a statement of what um, the application server vendors would necessarily, bar they'd need to meet to sort of adhere to that specification. Um, and so that's just purely a statement. There is no implementation really to provide. It would be the, a, a compliant app server would do this thing. And that's not something I can have control over specifically because I'm not in Red Hat, I'm not in IBM. I can't make that the first implementation. Um, so I think there's a, going back to sort of the general point, I think it's maybe on a per spec basis where on the whole, if it's something completely new, maybe there's an implementation required to kind of help solidify the specification. But certainly then um, me going and trying to write it as a specification has helped me to clarify in my own mind, I think to David's point, what I'm actually trying to achieve and whether there's any benefits there. Um, and also hopefully it will be in a form that provides more constructive conversation 
rather than a long thread where you miss, you know, if you've missed one of the comments, you could be missing something important. Ken, do you have any uh, thoughts on the concept of capturing ideas at any stage? Uh, I guess one approach to do that would be to use the uh, GitHub issues for the Eclipse Micro Profile project, similar to how we track architectural things there. We could have a, um, a label for um, ideas or something like that. But as, as I'm the only one of this views, um, I'm okay with things continuing as they have to date. You mean that the that the sandbox can hold just kind of crazy idea code? I don't like it, but I'm the only one with that view, so that's fine. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent agree that to get out of the sandbox, you got to have an implementation, and that a lot of stuff that enters the sandbox may never leave. Um, can I just ask when you say when you do mention sandbox, do you mean the, the GitHub MicroProfile sandbox sandbox repo? And is getting into that by actually having, you know, raising a pull request from your own fork and that pull request getting merged into that sandbox, that central GitHub repo? Right. Or am I misunderstanding completely? Yeah. No, nope, that, that, that's that, it. That was the understanding. So when we had this discussion about creating the sandbox. Um, it was really sort of uh, teed up as, and I'm trying to find the document because the readme on the sandbox doesn't capture it. Um, but there was a thread and the, the concept was that, uh, that the sandbox would basically anything would, would, where you could incubate any crazy idea at any stage just to capture ideas because sometimes it's easier to explain yourself with, with some mocked up code, right? or even working code, but sometimes it's easier than just like pasting an annotation in an email and going, hey, look at that. Um, and that things would be merged with, with the low bar, basically, if it wasn't a spam, merge it. Yeah, we did that back in the day because, I mean, I had pretty much issues with getting metrics accepted into it. I wrote a proposal with the proposal form that existed back in the day. And and then we had a, I don't know, 20 page GitHub issue discussion on it and, and all these things. And at the end in the call, we said, okay, this is ridiculous. Uh, well, paperwork to just get, being able to get started and we need to have something else where we get, yeah, we can quickly get yeah. started. And then after, mm -hmm some people or a bunch of people say yeah this is cool then promote that to a, to a between quote real project um outside of the sandbox to to continue there to who's sharing screen us back. can you click the link that that we that i posted in the chat the feature in it this is where we yes, started i will do that i found it so Okay, that was what I was going to actually say. I, the, I wonder whether it's the pull request process that would address maybe um, the concern about literally anything and everything getting in versus, you know, the pull request acts as a point of focus to review, to provide feedback and either decline it then because it needs more work or accept it because it's good enough to be discussed further possibly. Right, so that, that, that's step zero. Um, was the intent of the of the sandbox, and it was you know, it says intentional zero bar to entry to capture ideas when time permits. So, from anyone, even if not yet an active committer. So the idea, what we what we wrote down was that if somebody in the community has some time, like they got a three day weekend and they're not even in a con. con, con they're no, they've never said hello on the list at all, right? But they got, oh, it's a, it's a three-day weekend. I think I'm going to do some micro-profile fun stuff that they can go straight to the sandbox and start working and, su and submit a PR. Uh, and, you know, we should start taking their energy, right? Take, take, take the activity. 
and uh, you know, uh, and so that you know that was that was the spirit of of the sandbox, right? That we, to capture creativity when it happens, when lightning strikes, go ahead, have fun in the sandbox. So so you know, that's definitely not uh, a that statement definitely does not say uh, when time permits from anywhere, anytime, provided you have a fully working implementation. All right. That's definitely not what that, that, that sentence says. Um, is there, is there a way to indicate the maturity of a project in the sandbox? Well, I, I don't, I don't know about that. Um, but definitely to get the step one where you're requesting a repository, you got to have an, you know some legs it's only like we have two successful projects coming into the sandbox one by i believe was andy one by alex on the projects and they started the thread they attended the call they started the thread and the process is dictated here so what do we expect to improve because we have been talking about this for a while now and I don't see a closer closing, and it's already 140, oh. 11.40. Okay, but now, to be fair, I mean, Ken was about to just, you know, call uncle and say that we're done, so I... <laughs> that's, not, that's not how we do things. And yeah. Ken, I adore you, but no, that doesn't work. Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, that's done. So we keep the existing process. Yeah. Uh, I think we should, we should update the, the first step to say something and the, you say no approvals or previous notification requirement and no deadlines. Just make it specific with deadlines so that the bar is low, but let's add time frame. Like there is no deadlines. You, it might never go into effect. It's not stated here and it needs to be stated in a step zero on expectations. Should any coder decide to own it or clone it and start working on it, it needs to know that Maybe it doesn't work and it's okay. But step one needs to be adjusted with what we have talked for the last 15, 20 minutes. So I guess I would just say that step one still says no negative votes. So if there is a strong objection to anything that's proposed in the sandbox, you know, that has to stand. Um, but if the negative ones are coming in because there's no implementation, then I don't know if that really is helpful. Uh, anyway, uh, what, what are we updating in the feature in it? What are we, what are we stating more clearly? What we should it? write it here in these minutes and just That's what I'm trying to do. I don't know if I'm going to catch awesome. it properly. <laughs> Uh. Let's write it up and update quickly. So I, I, I guess I want to come back to, to, to Ken and just are, are you are you are you happy with the, with the discussion? Well, I, I'm happy with the discussion we had, um, but I, I still think we need implementation but as i'm as i said as i'm the only one i'm not going to hold up the train for that well i mean i agree that we need implementation for you to be a micro profile spec um do you believe that we need implementation in order to, to capture ideas no that will well, hold on i asked ken not necessarily to capture ideas but for me it's a case as i mentioned that because MicroProfile doesn't have implementations, if there is something is going into a sandbox that doesn't have an implementation anywhere else, then you've kind of got to put the implementation in the sandbox to make sure it works. So there's kind of this chicken and egg problem of you have to create the implementation in the sandbox, but then to get out of the sandbox, it's got to be somewhere else. So from that perspective, I feel like it's just easier if it's already somewhere else. Why would we put the, why would someone have to put the implementation in the sandbox? 
Uh, well, simply from the perspective, well, I guess they don't have to, but um, without requiring someone else to host it somewhere, that's probably going to be, be, be perceived as the easiest thing to do. I mean, I guess if we take... Could we discourage people from putting implementations in the sandbox? We could certainly just... So what we could do is... I mean... We could capture the philosophy of what the sandbox is for and capture the philosophy of what the sandbox is not for, right? So if someone starts putting implementation in the sandbox, I would say that's not what the sandbox is for. Sandbox is for, you know, capturing ideas on what would be a spec. And so, you know, do the implementation work somewhere else uh, right off the bat, you know, just because why, you know, I mean, does, I don't think that's controversial. Does anybody disagree that they should be doing implementation work somewhere else? I, I totally agree with you, David, because uh, the, in the, our like, uh, the specification and also in the, in the readme, we say, okay, here is the sample implementation. So normally we provide a link. If, if we put an implementation here, because and then eventually we have to delete it, eventually have to end up somewhere else because we don't really want to see this is as a reference implementation. We don't have the reference implementation. It's okay that. to do somewhere add a link in the readme or something like that. To right. prove. So, uh, if we had some guidelines on what the, the sandbox is for, what the sandbox is not for, specifically it's not for developing an implementation, you know, you, you should do that elsewhere. Would, I think that, that would help a lot, yeah. Does that start to get closer to your to addressing your concerns? Yeah. It, we should be like adding like uh, restrictions on, on how to use this sandbox and then just add a few bullet points there. And that will be like a steps one, like, right. you know, like the, the, the code of conduct of the sandbox. That's sure. kind of cool, actually. Uh, so I think the sandbox is useful to have a zero bar to entry, but I, I don't think it's an issue to put kind of if you use it, I like to use this analogy a lot, but you know, in the bowling alley, they, they put bumpers in the gutters, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, putting some bumpers in the gutters, meaning, you know, here's what you shouldn't be doing in the sandbox. So I, I think, um, well, I think it sounds like we're about to bar implementations from the sandbox. I just wanted to point out that we have two proposals kind of brewing right now, um, both Boost and the uh, system testing project that are, not really, you know, they're not your typical micro profile specs, but they are just kind of um, tooling projects that have a concrete implementation with no interface. Um, and it's a whole another can of worms of like where those things end up ultimately. But right now we're using the sandbox to develop those. And those certainly do have implementations behind them. Yeah, um, this was the comment I was trying to kind of inject my conversation, uh, my, my thoughts in earlier in the conversation where um, I, I think those types of efforts, first of all, they're totally awesome, um, but they should be outside of the micro profile sandbox. Um, we could still, you know, people can have discussions on them in the Google group and all of that. But one of the things that, you know, even early on with micro profile extensions project, I want, you know, I, I think it's good for the micro profile community if we see broader support outside of the micro profile IO kind of smaller system, right? I'd, I'd rather to see layered projects happen throughout the industry as opposed to everything being centered in one kind of small um, uh, area. Right? So that was my thought. So, so those two projects in particular, um, I mean, they, they aren't specs, right? And especially when we start coming up with the specification project, sorry, specification process, right, that, that Mike alluded to earlier, we're gonna to have to close the loop on that. It, it also complicates issues because we'd be both a spec project, but also not a spec project. <laughs> so that's a, a little bit of, a, of an aside, but I don't know, I, I thought I'd lay that out there, that those kinds, types of projects I think should be happening outside of the, the sandbox. So uh, Kevin summarized uh, well in one of the threads and uh, provide a few options. Maybe the people can share their ideas. 
there's a quite a few options to choose from. One option I quite like is maybe, oh. Uh, sorry, Kevin, you go ahead. Well, I, I, I'm just concerned that we're gonna go down another, no. uh, a different path. <laughs> okay. Right. And I, I think we got to just close on the sandbox okay. item first. Last one. Back to sand, sandbox, I have one final thing to say. So for the implementation, I would say this proof of concept is not, shouldn't have a full implementation and then you can exit to sandbox. I think uh, as long as you can prove all oh, this idea is feasible and uh, Basically, for our specs, is uh, we have a rough implementation is from, I mean, uh, borrowed from somewhere, and etc. Improve this uh, can be achieved. Uh, again, I just wanted to re comment on what John said in terms of it's okay for things beyond the outside. I, so the fact that we have a couple things in there that are kind of tools and therefore not really specs and. Um, I think that's okay that they were in the sandbox or are in the sandbox because we're talking about them, right? Like we're not always going to know what to do with, with what we put in the sandbox and that's okay. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I know where you're coming from. It's, it's an idea, you know, idea generation area. But. Right. So we're, we're not always going to know what to do. Right. So uh, Guys, I think we have lost the track here. The sandbox well, doesn't limit a coder to just use started, the tool. I like to finish my ideas. So, Go ahead. Uh, so in this particular situation, we have a couple things which are clearly tooling. And you know, we have start.microprofile.io, which is also tooling. And so there is a place in our community for tooling of a certain nature. Um, and because we had this, because we have this sort of dumping ground where crazy ideas can go, there seems to be a theme emerging uh, around tooling. And uh, it's a discussion that I think we should definitely have that's maybe a bit bigger than the sandbox. It's what do you do about tools? Okay, so I'm, I, so that's a well, conversation we should have. Yeah, exactly. Later, I, I agree. For next time, right? yes, this is the hammer yeah. sign. The hammer's coming down. Uh, <laughs> move on to the next topic. Not trying to cut anybody in particular off, David. But um, no, I'm just. Oh, no, I'm just <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to have the discussion now. I wanted to yeah, call no. out that's the discussion we should have. Yes, yep. that was my sarcasm, by the way. Um, so no, I agree with you entirely. So we, uh, th so we should have that conversation. This is a conversation that's brewing for been brewing for like over a month um if not longer so i wanted to give it a good chunk of time maybe we give it a little bit too much time to be honest given the agenda but let's continue this conversation in the agenda sorry in the uh in the group i removed the decision label because i don't think we've really reached any decisions um around um what the sandbox should and shouldn't be but that's a conversation we should have perhaps on that same thread okay so let's revisit this thread. Hmm? Who will on that send that thread uh, or start that thread? You, John? No, I mean, who owns it? Um, whoever wants to own it, right? Um, <laughs> you know, well, I, I mean, Ken brought up the in initial issue and it's been going uh, on and on and on. So I don't know necessarily who wants to own it. Um, and if no one, to be honest, if no one does own it, then it's just going to die on the, on the vine. So, Correct. So, so let's I have the in agreement on the sandbox, the only outstanding issue was the tooling discussion, which is separate. I yes. think we're done with the sandbox stuff. Yeah, we well, are. But we haven't defined what the guidelines for what is and isn't. So that's why I removed the decision label off of it because we kind of, those guidelines okay. have to be defined. That, that, that's the I only reason why. They to start a Google, a Google document and just draft it really quickly yeah. and close it. I think, and anyone here, if we had a, 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 a get issue, and we add a few people, collaborators, we can have this done before next call because we can work as synonymous, right? Like just- All right, hammer. <laughs> Hammer's coming down, I apologize. Uh, I shouldn't have continued the conversation with my comment. All right, so <laughs> next, uh, so I'm guilty. So um, next topic, Gordon, launching small rye event sourcing project. 
Okay, so I initially created some things in the uh, sandbox folder. Um, I think at the time I was just being a bit uh, difficult because of the discussions about the bar of entry to it. I thought I'll just create something. But I moved out of there to the small ride project um, that's linked in the URL uh, where you can read the readme. And the reason why I created that is because when I go to conferences and things like that and talk to uh, customers, a common theme that comes up is the problems that users have when they're not living in a world of, of like global transactions and how to keep up consistency. And there's a lot of material on this topic, whether it's to do with CQRS or event sourcing, or there's been a, a recent push from Lightbend, which they've sort of branded as um, stateful serverless, which includes event sourcing and CRDTs. And uh, I had a look around and I've been thinking for well over a year now, you know, what's, what value could I add after, or we could add after, um, you know, XA transactions. And I, and I think it's this, something around this outbox pattern where uh, a little bit, um, it, it nests in quite well with the long running activities or sagas. So you maybe have an outbox pattern where you're creating um, events to notify people what's happened. And if your local work goes okay, you might commit that and then these events go off for other people to try and achieve eventual consistency. But you might occasionally have uh, spoken too soon and you have to kind of undo something. So I sort of spent a bit of time, uh, months reading around the topic and what, what, what is working and what would fit on top of micro profile. And what I came up with was um, I found this project, the Debezium project, which talks about um, change events. And they actually come from underneath um, the database change event log. And they've got some very clever stuff that can, for example, you know, suck out and open up a cursor with uh, read stability at a particular timestamp, suck out all the data on a table. But once they, once they get to the end of that cursor, they can then go to the DB2 or the, the database change log from that timestamp and they can pick up changes that have happened subsequently, um, which, uh, I think it's actually analogous to specifications in micro profile. You know, when we initially kicked off, we looked around at what was there already, hoovered various things up, and now we've kind of hoovered up all the obvious stuff. And it's a case of looking out to see what's emerging technology. And I think that support for um, distributed state and consistency is, is a big user pain point. And a lot of it is plumbing. You know, when you look at what Debezia manages to do automatically, a lot of that is plumbing. And people may differentiate, you know, what is uh, just sort of state change events from actual commands. So there's a whole sort of body of work on uh, command query um, responsibility separation. So what this uh, work initially is, is more to do with um, um, you know, basic sort of state distribution and eventual consistency rather than some sort of um, triggering of, of, of command uh, microservices. But um, the reactive messaging spec, it gives us a, a convenient way to transport the change events around using connectors. And also it provides a very good way to um, sort of mark particular user methods with particular shapes as ones which catch, uh, you know, up till now reactive messages or send them. So it nests quite well with that. And, um, and also, once we have a distribution mechanism sorted out, then it can, you, I can see how it can be extended quite naturally to then introduce a, a little bit more metadata in the change events to be able to support um, CRDTs as well. So what I'm thinking about is how do we go from where we are to CRDTs, and I can kind of see a, a, a roadmap of how to get there. Hey, Gordon, what's CRDT? You've used that a few times, and I'm not sure what Sorry. it is. Uh, my apologies. It's uh, conflict, conflict-free replicated data types. So it's the technology that allows us, for example, to all edit this uh, minutes document and for it to not end up in a huge heap. And um, there's various um, data structures that people, for example, like then support where they might have like maps or lists or queues uh, where you can um, create a number of services that are interested in, in a particular data structure and multiple people can do updates and it resolves itself. It's often uh, um, most recent writer wins, but you can create um, 
causal links between one thing and another, which means that uh, things that arrive out of order and get processed in a sort of semantically consistent way. And, um, and there's other databases that are emerging that are beginning to support it as well. But I think with uh, one of the power about, of the reactive messaging uh, model is it can do um, sort of distribution in a way that you know, more than one person can, can append to a topic and they can kind of add themselves to a topic uh, using the Kafka infrastructure, which is a bit more generic than the existing um, CRDT data types. So it is a bit blue sky, um, and um, I think some bits are quite concrete. The sort of the, the, the readme document's a bit blue sky, but the actual issues are a bit more concrete, and I'd encourage anyone who's interested to, to join in. Okay, now shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, thanks for sharing that. So, yeah, if anyone's interested, um, definitely take a look um, at what's going on. Is that where your conversation is? If people want to have the conversation, is it through Small Rye, or do you do it through the MicroProfile Google Group, or where do you actually, where do you want the engagement to be? Well, I don't know, to be honest. I think uh, I, I think that um, initially I went to Small Rye because the community that you know seemed to express interest were you know Gunnar Morling, Ken. Finnegan and uh, Clement Escoffier. But if there was a wider community, I, I don't really have any um, opinion on where. It's like the sandbox. It's very easy to get a Git repo. So I don't really mind where it is. I think the one thing about the small rye is much more controlled, you know, for example, by mm -hmm. uh, quite maybe correctly by somebody like Ken improving PRs, whereas I'm more used to kind of just bashing things in any way I like. So it, it is a little bit restrictive, but that maybe raises the quality. So you were you were asking. I mean, you were responding to a. Uh, I think more to more specifics than I, what I was really asking. It's like, if if they want to continue this conversation and ask questions, should they do it in the context of the MicroProfile Google Group, or is you know do you do GitHub issues? Do you have a different chat group? It's like, how do they engage you on this? And well, part of that I, engagement might be where should the code you know where should this yeah. be. I, I would like to, as Ken quite correctly said, the concrete way of doing it is through issues in the small rye repo. Okay. If people you know, yes. can get the authority to join in there. But I mm -hmm. think the MicroFile Google group is a good place to kind of encourage people Both. Uh, towards there because it's just as, as David was saying earlier on, you know, if you've got a repo somewhere off to the side, it's less of a kind of rallying point. Gordon, I think it's awesome. I think that anything you will do as a coder, if you use the Git, and if you could use issues, and then you provide the data via the forum, there is traceability. We need all of it, and I think this is just a great initiative. Is there a future specification and opportunity here? I believe so, because um, the great thing about, say, the Bezium versus, you know, like DB2 replication manager or SQL replication manager is it's heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. So uh, similarly, you know, when, when I used to do Corba uh, transaction services, we put a lot of effort into like, interoperability testing. Yep. So one thing that a specification is good for is that you will be able to connect microservices from different vendors. And um, by having a specification for, for example, how the change events are structured and what the JSON is, it will enable you know, the ability to connect a, a Liberty a change event source uh, through a reactive messaging stream to a light bend, well, you know, a Tommy Tribe um, reactive messaging incoming connector. Whereas without a spec, it just won't plug and play. Right. So what, what, you're, you're doing basically the implementation work at Small Rye, and you're, and you're fleshing out the specification, potential future specification over in Small Rye. I think that, that that's why. Wow. Wow. I, I'm happy to fit in. I mean, I'm over there because I was kind of... What I was going to say, hold oh, well, let me just get to the end. Sorry. Uh, you know, what would still be useful is if there's a representation of the future specification potential in the sandbox. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, I would like that too. I would like that too. I just need to fit in between what Ken's happy with and what you're happy with. And um, yeah, I think you were in the sandbox initially, Gordon, right? Yes. Okay, let's stop here. If we wanted to keep everyone happy, we should be selling ice cream, right? Okay. So, I, 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 didn't get the, I didn't get the thing crossed. Uh, 
you should at least have a document in the sandbox that describes what the technical motivations are and what the potential API might look like. And if people want to help flush out stuff, you can point them towards the implementation work you're doing in small ride. Like there could be a link there that go, you know what I mean? Like exactly. Yeah, I, I, I must apologize. I had a long stutter there in the, um, in, in the video feed. So I, I might have missed the beginning of that, but okay. I, I'm so, very happy to fit in with um, whatever. I'd like to learn how to build a community. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 I love the logging stuff because it was not Red Hat or IBM and it was not, you know, a vendor. Right. So what I'm saying is that you should at least have a, 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 an ASCII doc file in the sandbox that says, here's a crazy idea being developed. Here's the tech motivations. The future API could look like this. Go over to the small white project and help work on flushing out implementation. Uh, but you're starting to see the, the, the spec project in, okay. in the bus. You know what I'm saying? So you're, yes. you're, you're, and as you learn things in small ride, come over and keep flushing out that part of the, the sandbox that says, Here, okay. here's our idea forming up, right? Okay. So I think that that's a good, and, and you could link to a small ride in your proposal, right? Okay. And, uh, and, and so you're, you're 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 doing implementation work outside the sandbox, but you're also iterating the future spec concept in yeah. the sandbox, and I think that that's a good balance. Okay, I hear what you're saying. No technical debt in the proposal material in the sandbox. I, I, that's maybe not the paraphrasing that I would use, that, but but right. just you know doing in parallel, right? So okay, so you have implementation work that's kind of crazy idea. It's happening outside the sandbox. You have spec idea stuff that's crazy idea it's happening in the sandbox and that represents the future steady state which is in the future there will be a fully flushed out implementation and a fully flushed out spec and so why not start like that with one foot in the sandbox and one foot in the implementation okay i'll, I'll take that back to um clement and gunnar and ken and i guess we can have a chat and um it seems sensible to me and then as the you know I, as the people involved want, want discuss what they want to do, I'll, we'll just, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very happy to do that. But I'll discuss it with the other team members. Some sure. pretty good people are there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it here. We're we're officially over time by almost five minutes. So, um, very interesting meeting, <laughs> not quite the way we normally have them, but some but some Wait. topics that were were uh, you know I, I think building up where we needed to have the conversation. So um, you know, double thumbs up on that. Um, for us actually having that conversation. So let's continue these discussions in the Google group. Um, same bat time, same bat channel in two weeks, and I'll have this recording posted up on uh, YouTube later today. And tweet it so that we can retweet it. You know, John. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to start the discussion again. Okay, good idea. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Thank everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. Good day. Yeah. Oh, world Bye. hunger. Wait. Bye. Yes. <laughs> One more thing. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye.